Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 22nd of April. India and Britain sail defence deals free trade expected by October. Taliban United Nations condemned deadly blast by Islamic State in two Afghan cities. And Maldives bans India out campaign citing threat to national security. And now for all the details. India and Britain signed a new defence cooperation agreement after a meeting between Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi in New Delhi on Friday. Johnson said the two countries will look to complete a free trade deal by the end of this year. India and Britain agreed on Friday to step up defence and business cooperation during a visit to New Delhi by UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson who said a bilateral free trade deal could be wrapped up by October. On his first visit to the Indian capital as the Prime Minister, Johnson discussed with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi ways to boost security ties with India, which buys more than half of its military hardware from Russia. They reviewed the implementation of Roadmap 2030 and discussed economy, climate and people-to-people -people ties. Johnson said Britain will help India build its own fighter jets. The two sides also signed agreements related to energy partnerships and agreed to reduce tariffs on mutual imports. The UK is creating an India-specific open general export license, reducing bureaucracy and slashing delivery times for defence procurement. We've agreed to work together to meet new threats across land, sea, air, space and cyber, including partnering on new fighter jet technology, maritime technologies to detect and respond to threats in the ocean. Meanwhile, Indian Prime Minister Modi stressed on dialogue and diplomacy in the Russia-Ukraine war to reach an immediate ceasefire and resolve the conflict. Earlier in the day, Johnson paid floral tributes at the memorial of India's freedom movement leader Mahatma Gandhi in New Delhi and was presented a memento. Security forces killed at least six terrorists in two separate encounters in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory, police said on Friday. The encounters come days ahead of the visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the region. This would be his first visit to the territory after the government revoked its special status in 2019. Ahead of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Jammu and Kashmir territory over the weekend, several encounters erupted between terrorists and security forces in the region. One of the encounters broke out in Sunjwan area of Jammu district, where two terrorists and one soldier of paramilitary CISF were killed during the gun battle after a bus carrying security personnel came under attack on Friday morning. The terrorists were affiliated to Pakistan-based Jaish e Mohammed terror outfit. Senior police official Mukesh Singh said security forces had launched a search operation in Sunjwan area of Jammu after receiving inputs about the presence of terrorists in the area. We were able to eliminate two terrorists. Two AK-47 rifles have been recovered. One underbarrel grenade launcher has been recovered. A satellite phone. About 10 magazines and a large amount of ammunition has been recovered. In the second encounter that has been underway for the last three days in Baramula town, Two more terrorists were killed on Friday. A total of four terrorists, including a top lashkar e taiba LET commander, have been neutralized so far. LET commander Yusuf Kantru, who was on the list of top 10 most wanted terrorists, was neutralized on Thursday. In news from Pakistan, 
Pakistan's ousted Premier Imran Khan has demanded fresh elections amid political turmoil after a new government has taken over in the country. Meanwhile, the ruling PMLN party Supremo Nawaz Sharif on Thursday lashed out at Khan and said the newly elected government faces an enormous challenge to revive a battered economy left by him. Pakistan's ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan on Thursday demanded fresh elections amid political turmoil after new government took over and warned it faces an enormous challenge to revive a battered economy. Khan, along with his over 100 lawmakers, had resigned in the lower house of the parliament after he lost a vote of confidence moved by a united opposition that blamed him for mismanaging economy, governance and foreign relations. Addressing a huge rally in Lahore city, Khan, the chairman of PTI party, asked his supporters to be ready for his call to march towards Islamabad if his demand to call fresh elections was delayed. Meanwhile, PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif addressing reporters in London on Thursday along with PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari berated Imran Khan blaming him for breaking the back of Pakistan's economy. The new government of Pakistan PM Shahbaz Sharif faces a tough call to reverse subsidies in oil and power and tax amnesty announced by Imran Khan in the run-up to his fall while the country grapples with a balance of payments crisis. Pakistan's Finance Minister Mifta Ismail, who is in Washington for talks with IMF for resumption of a loan program, had earlier termed Khan's move was like planting mines for the new government. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban and the United Nations have condemned Thursday's explosions in Afghanistan's northern mazar sharif and Kunduz cities that caused at least 22 casualties. Militant group Islamic State claimed responsibility for both the attacks. The Taliban has said those responsible will be found and severely punished. The Taliban and the United Nations have condemned explosions at a Shiite mosque in the northern Afghan city of Mazar-e-Sharif in another blast in Kunduz city, targeting a van of military mechanics that also caused at least 11 casualties on Thursday. Militant group Islamic State claimed responsibility for both the attacks. The explosions happened during the Islamic holy month of Ramadan and two days after blasts tore through a high school in a predominantly Shiite Hazara area in western Kabul, killing at least six people. Richard Bennett, the UN Special Rapporteur for Afghanistan, said, Systematic targeted attacks on crowded schools and mosques calls for immediate investigation and accountability. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid said, Those responsible will be soon found and severely punished. The Shiite community, a religious minority in Afghanistan, is frequently targeted by Sunni militant groups, including Islamic State. We have been able to do a lot of work to make sure that the people of the country are able to do a lot of work. تا چه وقت مثل این قد انتحاری باشه وضعیت افغانستان وضعیت کشور ما بسیار خراب است ما هیچ جای امنیت نداریم اسکول استودنتس ور آلسو امانگ دی ووندد ان دی روڈ سایڈ بلاست ان کندوز افیشل سید افغانستان طالبان رولرز سی دی ہیو سیکیورڈ دی کنٹری سنس ٹیکنگ پاور لاسٹ اگست بٹ انٹرنیشنل افیشلز ان انالیسٹس سی دی ریسک اف ا ریسرجنس ان ملیٹنسی ریمینز and the Islamic State militant group has claimed several attacks. Moving on, Maldives President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli has issued a decree banning India out campaign that has been roiling the country for months, citing a threat to national security. The campaign, first led by a social media activist, is now led by former President Abdullah Yamin, following his release from house arrest after the top court overturned a money laundering and embezzlement conviction allowing him to potentially make a return to politics. Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli on Thursday issued a decree banning the India Out campaign now led by former President Abdullah Yameen, terming it a threat to national security. 
titled Stopping Campaigns that Incite Hatred Against Various Countries Under Different Slogans, the decree makes a specific mention of the India Out protests as an organized campaign which aimed to disrupt relations between New Delhi and Mali and destabilize peace and security in the region. President Soli also ordered the removal of all banners from Abdullah Yamin's residence and the headquarters of Progressive Party of Maldives, PPM, seen as being closer to China. Former Maldives President Yamin jailed on corruption charges, returned to politics with campaign against Indian influence in the country, worrying New Delhi, which is battling China for supremacy in its own backyard. He wants to cancel defence deals signed with India, with which Maldives shares decades of close and friendly ties. Yamin alleges New Delhi has developed a major military presence in archipelago of the coast of Sri Lanka, claims the ruling party denies. During his term, he made Maldives a part of Beijing's Belt and Road Infrastructure Initiative, a program the United States sees as a way to trap smaller countries into debt. In news from Nepal, Disrupted for two consecutive years due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the secondary education examination began across Nepal on Friday. Amid weakening third wave of COVID-19 infection, students were seen taking exams, which is final for their secondary level studies. Total number of active COVID-19 cases in the Himalayan nation stands at 298. Secondary education examination in Nepal began on Friday, with students appearing in person as the COVID-19 wave in the Himalayan nation continues to falter. Disrupted for two consecutive years due to the two waves of coronavirus infection and passing with the third one, students throng to examination centres to attend the exam, which is final for the secondary level studies. Earlier for two years, 2020 and 2021, the National Examinations Board, which has been conducting the final exams annually, had recognized school's internal assessments of students for secondary education examination results due to the pandemic. excited <laughs> As many as 514,967 students from 11,615 schools are attending the examination with compulsory English as the first subject. Millions of Nepali students in the earlier year had received both the dosages of the anti-COVID vaccine, which as per officials has ensured the smooth commencement of exams. All COVID-19 health protocols are followed, authorities said. Though the infection in numerical terms seems to have somewhat decreased, Nepal's health ministry has urged everyone to follow the health safety protocols, saying the risk of pandemic is still there. Currently, there are 298 active cases in the country. On the occasion of World Earth Day, school students in parts of India on Friday vowed to protect the environment and took part in cleanliness drives to mark the occasion. The annual event held since the year 1970 demonstrates support for environmental protection. In a bid to raise awareness about the need to conserve the environment, students in India's northern Muradabad city mark the word Earth Day in a unique way by tying rakhis on trees. Rakhi is a symbolic holy thread which a sister ties ceremoniously on the wrist of her brother as a mark of revered bondage and a vow to protect each other. The school children vowed to protect trees. They also displayed posters with messages like save environment and save trees, save life. Our earth has increased a lot of global warming. We need to reduce it. We need to plant more trees. We need to reduce the pollution. What have you done here? We have made some posters so that we can give a message to the public that we need to plant more trees. We need to plant more trees so that we don't want to plant more trees so that we don't want to plant more trees. Meanwhile, Manas Kumar Sahu, a famous sand artist in eastern Puri city, created a sand sculpture to mark the World Earth Day, inspired by this year's theme, Invest in Our Planet. 
Meanwhile, school students and NCC cadets took part in a cleanliness drive organized by a local administration on the bank of River Ganga in northern Prayagra city. Earth Day is widely acknowledged as the world's largest secular celebration with over a billion people participating each year in a day of action to improve human behavior and implement global, national and local policy reforms to protect the environment. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.